Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Um, so we had uh, our dreaded people in the hospital industry would know our dreaded Q3 year joint commission survey um, last week. They actually showed up on a holiday, which we were not expecting. Um, it wasn't a holiday we celebrate, but you know, Veterans Day last week is when they showed up. Um, okay, and that's and that can get annoying. It's just a big regulatory survey, so they go in through and you basically spend all week, you know, walking around with surveyors and showing them closed charts and you know going through all the stuff that it's, they tell you what you did or did not do. So good purpose to the survey, but it's really stressful, like when you're working it. One thing yeah. that was fascinating though is one of the sessions they did what they called a non-scoring session and the lead surveyor was a emergency department physician for 30 years then he started working for the um, emergency preparedness division he was emergency department physician in downtown new york new york city and then he was on their emergency preparedness committee preparing for like natural disasters and things like that. And, you know, you know, things like after nine 11 and um, mm. all that stuff. And so a huge knowledge base for emergency preparedness stuff, which is a huge passion of mine. And he did a non scoring session with us where it was supposed to be two hours of, he gives us some examples from his career. We give him some examples of what we're doing. We ask questions. He tries to offer advice for like best practices and things that we could change or things we could implement. And he would take things that we do that were like maybe like new and exciting to him. And he would take them back to you know see if they could you know be streamlined anymore if they were like really good ideas and all. Turned into an hour and forty five minutes of him just telling us basically praising all the work that he's done, which was fascinating. But it was not what it was supposed to be. Um, and only like 15 minutes of us getting to ask any questions. And I'm the only one who actually asked any questions and gave like a really random, like circular answer that everybody was kind of like, huh? Like what? That, that didn't answer the question at all type of deal. But one of the most interesting concepts is think of this. Hospitals in New York apparently have, uh, and all hospitals have to have a plan for this, but he was very intrigued by the concept of hospital evacuation as opposed to mass casualty incidents because everybody every hospital every year has to do a mass casualty incident drill so if we have another 9-11 and you get a huge influx of patients for whatever reason like what's your response right he, he's a lot more interested because he thinks so many more hospitals are less prepared for it what do you do if you have to do a mass evacuation from your hospital for whatever reason and think yeah. if you have to evacuate your hospital, let's say, like I have to evacuate my hospital because we're out of power, something happens to our power, we get cut off from the grid. Well, you can possibly start utilizing the local hospitals in the area. But if you're being evacuated for another reason, such as like there's a hurricane coming through, you can't just evacuate people to the hospital next door because they're evacuating for the exact same reasons, you know? Right. So he's talking about the plans with this. And I guess when he was up in New York, there was a time uh, twice where they evacuated hospitals when he was being the emergency preparedness person for them. One thing I'd never thought of, they had to plan for, because it happened, people refusing to leave a hospital during an evacuation. Patients who refused to leave and be evacuated. Huh. Have you ever thought, would you have ever thought of that as a concern? Well, I mean, uh, yes, because, I mean, I wouldn't have, you know, if you hadn't asked me this, but once you say it, I can totally 1,000% understand that because I've seen how stubborn some people can be, uh, especially, you know, in the hospital or whatever, and they they get scared. They don't want to leave where they think they're safe and all this, and or they're already frustrated at the hospital, and they, I mean, I don't know. I could see a million reasons why someone would not want to be evacuated um, from a hospital. Where I mean, where are you even taking them? So what they were doing, I'm trying to think of where they went, because the one major evacuation that he had to deal with um, was not like they were, there was a couple, I guess there was one that there was a hurricane coming through New York where they did evacuate a lot of the hospitals and um, nothing ended up, the hurricane ended up not coming. Down. I can't remember if it was Irene or it was one of the major hurricanes in the last, you know, 10 years. They evacuated uh -huh. a bunch of hospitals and nothing ever happened. And then the last one that was like five years ago, apparently they evacuated one of the major hospitals and, or they didn't evacuate one of the major hospitals and they actually did get hit and it was a big like problem. Um, 
But whatever scenario he was telling us about for one of them was actually a specific hospital had a problem where I don't remember if it was like noxious gas was leaking somewhere and they couldn't contain it and they had to like evacuate. But it wasn't that – it wasn't to the point where everybody inside was dying yet, but they had to get them out before it leaked into the hospital type of deal. So it was just uh-huh. one facility, so they were evacuating them to relatively close facilities. But the bigger – the problem – that comes with this stuff is what do you do if somebody refuses to evacuate? I mean, you force them, right? Police will not get involved. Really? Let's score somebody off of a hospital because it is illegal and against Amtala laws and things like that to take somebody away from a designated hospital space where they can get care to basically kick them out on the curb. Huh. So what you, know you, what, you know what's what the they, answer? You know, uh, this, this is the fascinating part to me. So apparently the city of New York, and this is only about New York because he said he was talking about doesn't know what the laws were in D.C. Like so he couldn't relate it to what we do or how they would act in that case. But New York, what they did was to evacuate a hospital, they just revoked the hospital's license. Huh. So they basically so they force the an evacuation too. by saying you are no longer a licensed hospital. You need to get everybody out. Oh, we haven't slept in a while. Um, and it's at nighttime. The yeah, and there's phantoms. Um, uh, and now the police will get involved because you're trespassing. Huh. And I thought wow. that was that's pretty crazy, insane. Like I've never thought of something like that before. I mean, that had to be something that took a little time, though. That's not like something you do in five minutes. Uh, I, I, well, I think what it is, is they, to do these evacuations, what they did was they revoked the hospital's license. But how long did it take before they could do that? Like how, oh, I, how, how, what's, well, how quick is that process? I don't know. I mean, it's immediate to revoke it. The question is what else, what other plans did you make beforehand? Because is it really fair to revoke the hospital license? Then you stop to have to stop caring for patients in any way until you evacuate them. I'm sure that that's not. <laughs> That's not the case. He was also talking about there being um, four major incidents and things like that that happen. There's waivers that you can apply for after the fact. And it's because in major incidents or some type of major emergency, you're not going to be able to conform to the standards you need to conform to of like um, HIPAA compliance and things like that. You Uh can apply for waivers after the fact just to say like hey you see so the CMS uh, you know Medicare and Medicaid will still pay me because even though I didn't meet the regulatory requirements for payment because I'm not HIPAA compliant that there's still ways to get paid for that stuff because of the nature of the the incident it is it's really fascinating things huh. that are put into play and then there's even 10 times more morbid things where he started talking about there's a national stockpile of, you know, ventilators and IV pumps and things like that for the hospitals that don't have enough in a massive scenario of, uh, of like a 9-11 type of incidents again. Yeah. But apparently one of the problems that they realized is they have 25,000 ventilators in this stockpile and there's national st- strategic stockpiles like apparently located around the nation so they can be deployed to geographical areas it's not just all like in you know <laughs> the right. center of the united states and everything has to go from there so they realize though they have all these like ventilators but they don't have enough trained people and there's not enough trained people that they could just influx and be like okay there's enough respiratory therapists now to run all the ventilators so this national stockpile is apparently not working to the point that it should because they have the equipment but not people to run the equipment. (laughs) And I guess there's been these weird cases before where physicians have tried to make a determination that this person is on a ventilator and the likelihood of their survival is so low, we should extubate them to get that ventilator and that resource who's running that ventilator to somebody who's got survivability. Hmm. But that's gone to court. And been deemed that that is against practice because you are perp- like willfully taking away somebody's 
ability to live like you're taking away the only thing keeping them alive knowing that they're going to die without a solution and people are right. getting like sued and that that is a bad thing but there's no, apparent yeah. well there's apparently no rules and requirements surrounding in an emergency who you have to like intubate you can do triage and just not intubate somebody but you can't extubate them when you've determined like if it's going to kill them you can't just extubate them and let them die that is where the problem comes so i guess what they one of the things that they do is they said it's very important to like make sure you do you you triage appropriately and put resources where you need to appropriately during those scenarios because you don't want to waste resources on people who aren't going to to live essentially but then the problem is you have all these paramedics who are running around in the field who are taking care of a patient and bringing in a patient that they've innovated in the field that you now are required to uh, take care of in an innovative state. So I guess right. New, New York, again, has this special chapter where what they'll do is, because paramedics run off of physician standing orders. Uh -huh. So what they do is apparently in certain scenarios, they will just revoke all, all standing orders for paramedics so that they can't do things really? like that in the field. And it's, it's so morbid, but so needed right to be on that it's just such an i walked out of this like session very like curious on the implementation of this because they talked about it i don't think they've ever implemented it can you imagine the day that you are also they've never had to like as revoke a license? far as i understand and they would just revoke it, it, no the hospital licenses they apparently have revoked to oh, that is force evacuations okay. that has happened but the removing paramedic standing orders to not be able to perform those uh -huh. items in the field so that you're not burdening the hospital. They have not had to do as far as I understand from what he said. I but gotcha. it, it's just so it's still crazy though. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, I don't know the country's in a state where all that stuff's going on. Like, I feel like half the stuff is going to go by the wayside, like do this and that. And then like the, the, the operating procedure is not going to be, held up no matter what i'm probably and i will tell you as you know you know my hospital has been hit by a ransomware attack you know in the past and mm -hmm. at one point i know that we were not being hipaa compliant um with certain records and stuff that we were trying to get in and out to make sure we could take care of patients people were setting up like my fies just to get certain data that they needed on patients like through the normal internet not no secure channels or anything just set up what they had to do to get the information that they needed to still take care right. of some of these patients and i mean we and we disclosed that and we still got payments for you know stuff because it was you know extenuating circumstances that you needed this information to like you know um still continue to take care of people appropriately so it's just i don't know it's such a weird different side of I had a weird thing happen HIPAA related the other day. Uh, um, my uh, my daughter had a, had a physical scheduled, and I was just getting back in town. I was coming back to like get my suit for the funeral and uh, to pick her up to bring her down to South Carolina for the funeral. But she had a physical, and so Crystal's uh, husband was going to take her to the to the to the thing, and he has taken her to this doctor multiple times um, for other things. Like whenever she had a doctor's appointment, he's taken her, and it's never been a thing. And then he texts me. I was on the way over there. I was going to meet him over there anyway. That's where I was going to pick her up from to take her back to South Carolina. And he's like, they won't uh, admit her because I'm not on her HIPAA release form. And I'm like, but haven't you brought her there like five times by now? And he's like, yep, I don't get it. And uh, so they wouldn't do anything until I got there. So, like, I guess every other time she's gone, they just ignored the HIPAA laws. Like, Well, I wonder if they just, I'll be honest, nobody's ever made me prove that my kids are my well, kids. Well, that was the thing. I walked in. They didn't even, they were like. Oh, so you're her dad? And I'm like, yep. And that was that. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I, I'm wondering if maybe some new astute person was just like, oh, you're her father. And he was like, oh, no, I'm her, you know, stepdad or whatever. And it's like, well, let's yeah. make sure the paperwork's appropriate here. Because, yeah, I've never been asked. Right. To, I, I, And it's funny. Julia's clearly never been asked either as the mother. And she has a different last name. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I never thought about that. But, yeah. Um. So yeah, I don't know. That was just one of those weird things where it was like, I don't even understand. Like, how many times have you brought her here already? Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, technically, you probably could argue if you really wanted to that they have been, you know, uh, HIPAA violations 
in the right. past, you know. <laughs> well, that's what I was kind of getting at with you. I was like, you know, technically they were violating HIPAA law, right? Yeah, I would, I would assume so, unless there's. Huh, yeah, I just, I mean, has maybe he has he always gone with Crystal? No, that's the thing. He's only brought her because Crystal couldn't come. Like the times he's gone, it was because Crystal had something else where she could not be and the one Was this anything take her. special? Anything different? I mean, this was just the annual physical he was bringing her in for. Um, and in the past, it's always been, you know, she was taking her because she she was sick or something. Um, but either way, he's been the only one present multiple times um, whenever she was sick and brought her to that same, you know, her primary, same uh. primary care she's had since she was born. <clears throat> yeah, that is really. Really interesting, because you know people could could get in a lot of trouble. You'd think, though. I'll, That's you know, what I thought. No, I'll, I'll be honest. Like people talk about HIPAA violations and stuff. I, every hospital probably makes a lot of very egregious HIPAA violations, and you right. might get you might get in trouble for it. You know, if somebody like if it gets to the back to the regulatory agency, but. You know, I, I've never heard of a hospital getting like, maybe I haven't researched it enough. I don't know, but I've never heard of a hospital just getting like shut down or a doctor's office because of such egregious HIPAA violations at all times. You know, right. I think it's just one of those things that always gets used that there is this right that people should expect and it, people get fined for not following that right all the time. You know? Right. That's kind of what I thought, too. That's weird. I just went ahead and add him to the form, so I'd have to worry about it again. But well, yeah, especially if you like want him to be able to go out there and do all that right. stuff. It's you know, sure. It's just weird that it wasn't there before. Um, yeah, but now it does make me wonder. Like, what what proof have they ever gotten that you are the father besides just verbally no. you saying that? You know, right? That's the thing. Like, I came in and she ran up and hugged me, and then the woman was like, "Oh, so you're her father?" And I was like, "Yep." And she's like, "All right, well, we can bring her in now." And that was that. And then she gave me the form. She's like, well, if you want to update, add him. And I was like, yeah, let me update it. Uh, and so she gave me the form to add him to the thing. But, uh, but yeah, like, they, they didn't have any proof that I was anybody other than just me being there and saying, yep, it's me. <laughs> yep, yep, it's me. She hugged me, therefore it's But, me. like, literally, he could have called, like, his buddy down the street and he could have showed up, you know? Right. Um, right. So, yeah, I thought that was kind of weird. Yeah, that would be, uh, that would be interesting. Hey, buddy. Buddy, you need to go night night, bud. Jack saying hi. It's a HIPAA violation. It's a <laughs> yeah, good time violation. violation, buddy. You gotta go night night, buddy. <laughs> Here, go back with Grammy, okay? No. Okay. Come on, buddy. Daddy's still recording. You can say hi to the people real quick. Say hi. 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 <laughs> good said hi. Dad. Yeah, but. Nobody. Daddy's not playing. He's doing work. <laughs> and it's so hard to say. <laughs> right? Sorry, Trust me, it's work. Sorry, I'm sorry, buddy. You gotta go back with Grammy, okay, no, buddy? Dad, can you play your... After you're talking to some people. And then I can watch the doctor. Tomorrow you can, buddy. Uh, yeah, definitely tomorrow, okay, buddy? Definitely. <laughs> Def did he say definitely he did, now he did yes <laughs> definitely definitely now, now. <laughs> night jack i love uh, you um <laughs> yeah it's, it's really honestly it's hilarious the way his like his vocabulary has just expanded in even the past like two months it's just it's baffling at some of the right. quote-unquote adult things that he says just it's <laughs> cracks me up like every day sometimes he'll just be like he'll be like hey do you want um you know, do you want to go do this? And he'll be like, um, no, I don't think so right now. I'd rather stay here. You know, just the way, the way he says things. You're just like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. How kids, yeah. How old is he now? Uh, two and a half. I mean, two and three quarters, I guess. It's so hard at this age because you don't talk about it in months anymore, but there's a huge difference between... You know, a two-year-old, a two-and-a-half-year-old, and, you know, an almost three-year-old. Right. I always hate the people that are, like, 72 months or whatever. They're like, all right, now. Yeah, no, the second they hit two years, you don't talk about them in months anymore. But you almost still should until th at least three. But you don't. Um, right. I guess he's, how old is he? He is 40 months. Uh, <laughs> no, that would be. Yeah, I think so. We would take the month thing too far. 
How do you feel about breastfeeding? What what at what age Fuck, do you think? Dude, dude, Jesus Christ, you really don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still breastfeeding? No, not 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 for nourishment. <laughs> uh okay. Uh, but I, I can definitely still answer questions for you <laughs> on this on this subject. Never mind. Uh, so I honestly think I think between eighteen months and two years is when. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Done. I'm thinking after the uh, two, they probably should be done. Yeah, eventually. and it's it's one of those things because like the uh, American Pediatric. So the, that's where the problem goes is the is American Pediatric Society or whatever their recommendation is minimum of two years uh because that's what they think is the best for building immunity blah 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 like things like that um a lot of people try to go you know six months to a year and think that they're doing great i'm sure and i i applaud you and you think you're i'm not i don't have to breastfeed you know because i'm not a woman um so anybody who does any length of time i'm like great good for you it's like it's proven to be better than formula from the uh gaining of immunity type standpoint so do it if you can you know as long as you can to the guideline but the problem is the guideline also says you should do it for at least two years or more is literally Hmm. what the guideline is written as that's interesting and i and i I, the problem is i don't have it there's no information that I could find that showed any increased benefit for over two years. Right. So, and it is kind of weird when it's no longer your, your nourishment in my mind, yeah. it should be, it's just, it's something you just got to like wean off of because it's not, you're not doing it for a purpose anymore other than comfort. And it right. is, it does get really annoying when, there becomes a needed comfort. Yeah. And it no, becomes, I understand that. It becomes yeah. an argument because he wants it for the comfort. Right. And no other, you know, no other reason. And it's something I can't offer, you know? Right. No. How, oh, that's the next question. How do you feel about the, the daddy boobs? You know what I'm talking about? The, I, like like the ones from Meet the Fox. Would you feel... I haven't seen that movie, the, but if he wore daddy boobs, then yes. Yeah, where they had it, he the had him like. Uh, it has like a milk sack in it and stuff. Yeah, and, and put, it was like, the breast milk and in that it. That one, they even went farther. They had it molded off of the mother's breast so it wouldn't oh my do God. nipple confusion. It was a movie, though. It was doing it to right, be right, like, right, right. funny as well as make fun of people who are overly protective helicopter parent slash grandparent, you know, type of, uh-huh. type of situation. But, um, but yeah. Um,. I guess there is a such thing as nipple confusion people talk about with some babies, like especially even going to uh, to a bottle too soon. Like even breast milk in a bottle can sometimes make certain babies not be wanting to get on the boob anymore because they get like confused. Really? I've heard of the, that's the term nipple I've, confusion exists. But like, I've heard I, like I, certain types of like bottle tops are like like – make the baby get fatter and stuff because they consume more and stuff. I don't know. I because just, it, well, yeah, bottles usually let things flow easier than a boob. Boobs you have right. to work at. Bottles are like, gimme, gimme, gimme. Um, right. Oh, you pulled a... A Brian? Wait, why did you dig this trench? What? I didn't dig a trench. <laughs> I didn't do it. Was this just a... a weird thing there's some gaps in the wall and stuff that is. that's what you mean i'm trying to dig these things down so we can get the uh the lava poured ah uh, gotcha no, i definitely hit a gap i thought i thought you were digging around down here but i think it's just one of those caves that we not come like into. cave parts yeah. yeah um so i mean if if i was struggling like if my baby would not drink from a bottle for me and just was crying and upset because clearly was hungry and needed to be soothed and just refused to take a bottle. And like Julia was like working like something the reason she couldn't be breastfeeding. And I had a nipple that worked. I would not be against it. You're not talking about your own milk. You're talking about the whole. Yeah, yeah the whole set. Yeah, I didn't know. I, if, right, if, right. I, if, my, if I started lactating for some reason, I'd, <laughs> I'd be a little concerned. Right. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. 
probably some kind of pus anyways. Yeah. It wouldn't be it's my it wouldn't be my <laughs> first choice to go with the you know the the artificial the nipple or whatever. Prosthesis. But yeah, I would I would do, do it if it was if it was the only thing that would work. Because I guess some some fathers fear that they're not getting the same connection. Oh like, fuck! Don't I, I don't give a the shit about the connection like that. Like. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Sorry. I think I think that that's taking it too far. I think that's that's you know, I feel like there'll be other opportunities for connection in my child's life. I don't have to get a fake breasts to feed the baby. Yeah, and I mean, you just gotta you gotta accept as a father that until the kids like walking and talking and playing and roughhousing and things like that, you are secondary in that kid's life. <laughs> Mom is number one at the beginning. There is no like question about that for i guess for breastfeeding uh i guess right. it might be different if you're bottle fed because uh um the dad can partake in that just as much um right but when dealing with you know breastfeeding yeah they they definitely have a stronger bond and connection during the the growing up process than than i have but now jack you you heard him he came in here like he, he loves us both he's still got a very strong connection with his mom but you know we are right. way closer now than we were when he was a baby and it was just because you know i you know help put him to bed at night I can sleep with him in his room and he gets scared like well he goes in his own room now and he'll wake up in the middle of the night and come into our room and uh and what I do instead of getting him back into our bed I'm just like hey let me go into your room with you and I'll sleep with you for the rest of the night so we're weaning him to be all night you know uh which is way better than where we were at I wish we had done sleep training a long fucking time ago but we're, we're are making... you doing anything different with the new child no, <laughs> nope. Because <laughs> you say, "I wish we had done this differently." Yeah, but then you're not. <laughs> yeah, I still wish we had done things differently. The problem is, <laughs> someone doesn't want to do things differently. Oh, if funny. you get what I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> and if you're listening, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That's funny. I mean, that's a thing for anybody who's going to be a parent out there anytime soon. And you're wondering, like, what the hell to do. Yeah, just accept the fact that you're not going to see eye to eye on all the parenting decisions. <laughs> and uh, somebody, most likely the woman, is going to win <laughs> in, the, uh, in those. And it might make you mad. And it might make you frustrated. But the important thing is raising a healthy child. <laughs> That's the hard part, though, is what is what does that mean? And sometimes that's where you don't agree. You know? Yeah, true. And I, I also I do feel it was unhealthy for the length of time that our because I mean, we didn't have Jack out of our room slash bed until Jamie was born. Literally, yeah, we remember, came from that. we came home stepped, from like, the, the hospital room. and had to start trying to get him to sleep in a different room, which was absolutely terrible. Um, yeah. I do not suggest anybody do that. And But the problem is, you know, like I said, again, it's one of those things that I wasn't the person that was making the decision. Despite how much I wanted to make the decision and argued about my own point, I didn't win those arguments. <laughs> you know. Uh, and, God. And it's not like it's one of those things that it's hard because I can't just yeah. I didn't I didn't like um what do you call it back down, but I still didn't win. And there's nothing I could have done. <laughs> I, I can't do anything about it still. You know, I guess I was one to think about Crystal being such a hypochondriac. She was scared to death that if, if the daughter was ever in the bed that we'd roll over and kill her, which is a so huge was... thing. Granted, once they get to a certain age, um. It's way less likely because it's just like back to sleep thing. You know, babies should be sleeping on their back. Absolutely true. However, there is an age where they get to. So like Jamie, the second you have arm strength again, they yeah, can push can themselves up. Right? Yeah. That's once they matters. can push themselves up, the whole back to sleep things out the window. They don't need to be on their back anymore. He can sleep on his yeah. stomach. He can do whatever he wants. He ain't going to let himself suffocate because he can actually move and get out of that compromising position. Um, right. Right. And granted, yeah, you could still we could still roll over on him, but he, he's kind of a beast, though. It'd be he'd probably he'd probably like push you right on off. <laughs> um, the our pediatrician actually always suggested, um, knowing that many people sleep with their baby in their bed and all. He was just a big advocate on if you've been drinking, avoid it as much as possible because that's when people that makes sense because that's when people not, are less likely, yeah, right. They're way more out of it. Um, and less likely to wake up, and that's where he's 
seen or heard of more problems. I don't know if he's actually ever seen right. a real problem. But what I used to do is like you know because I, I would still have my same work schedule, um, and so whenever because uh, Crystal went back to work for a period of time before she quit working all together, and so I was the only one like taking care of our daughter in the mornings until she got off work each day. And um, what I would always do is she would normally she'd sleep until like eight or nine o'clock in the morning. And once she got up, I would uh, I would, you know, feed her and change or whatever was necessary. And then I'd bring her into in the, in our bedroom at that point and let her sleep because she, she didn't go in bed to sleep after she ate normally. And so I would sleep with her then from that point. Uh, so there was there was a little bit of like her sleeping in the bed. And Chris always pitched a fit about that. But <laughs> I just ignored it. I was like, whatever. It's only like two hours a day. It's fine. Um but luckily, she didn't want that once she got. Though, you know, I guess I say that, but then on the weekend, she does want to sleep in my bed. But I think it's just because I got a TV. Yeah, uh, but also, but right, and, and that's and that's different. Like you know, sleeping in it, and I, I sleep in Jack's bed a lot of nights. At some point in the evening, I go into his room with him because he gets up and comes into ours. It's just getting later and later and later. Like for a while, it was you know three o'clock in the morning is when he'd come in. So I just go spend the last couple hours like in his bed. But I'm in his bed. He sleeps in a queen size bed, you know. Right. We went from crib to toddler bed extremely early. He was like, probably year he was in a toddler bed. Um, I know people who have kids that are jack stage that are still in in uh, cribs. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They don't I jump out of it and shit. Uh, no, they know not to, but they still sleep in cribs, and I don't know why That's they want crazy. that. That's crazy. And so we went from the toddler bed, and then you know the the guest room that we have, where I we just regular bed in there because if we want to sleep with you no yeah. reason to put you in a toddler bed because then if i have to come in and sleep with you because you're scared right. i'm just crunched up on a small freaking bed i don't want that i need to well, be my daughter's too. crib was one of those like three in one ones where it went from crib to toddler bed to full-size bed well full-size frame i guess you had to get a mattress but um i thought a lot of them are like that now where like your crib ends up being like your bed for <laughs> you know, you know until adulthood i guess or whatever we, we got a crib for free off of they call it the moth list around here it's like the mo- mom's on the hill you know on capitol hill um so we got it for free because somebody did, didn't have their baby anymore and you know wanted to go to somebody else who needed it so we got uh, this thing without instructions and it was mainly still already put together uh, where the screws were already in all their screw holes and stuff so all we did was put the thing together and we knew that it has this piece that's supposed to be the way to turn it into the toddler bed, but we could never figure out how it worked. And then we got one uh-huh. from uh, my parents anyway, like the race car bed. They were like really excited to give us the cute little race car bed, you know? Yeah. Um, so we used that instead. <laughs> Put the crib in our storage unit and then had to get it back out when Jamie was born and going to the crib out of a bassinet. Realized yeah. I hadn't attached all the screws to... I usually put them in a Ziploc bag and tape it to like an item and store it somewhere. The bag got missing somewhere. So I was like, I don't even know how to, what the hell is shooting me? There it is. Uh, I don't even know how to, um, you know, put this thing together, let alone put the day bed part of it. So finally is when I decided to look up a, a manual on it to get the screw sizes. Cause then I went to, to ACE hardware um, and got all the screws I needed to put the thing back together. And I was like, Oh, we had one point when we had this crib before, we put two crib mattresses at the bottom of it because it was too deep to Julia to put the kids in when they were way too young to be crawling out of it. Yeah. Turns out it's got like specific holes and lowering mechanisms on it. Like not lowering mechanisms, but different screw holes that you put the base of the crib into so you can have it at different heights for this. Oh. <laughs> Never knew about that until I read the, the manual. You know, this is at, on the second kid that's using it. Now right. I know how the daybed piece is supposed to go together to turn it into a toddler <laughs> bed. When you were saying that, I was wondering why you didn't just, like, get a manual. I but, uh... just didn't, yeah, didn't feel <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't need to stop for directions. I'm a man. <laughs> oh, God. Man, I well, <laughs> the whole I'm a man thing. I've been arguing with people a lot about that recently. I was when I was at my mom's house. I when I got there, they didn't have any food, and like she was coming home from the hospital and everything, and there was no food. There was a lot of family there, so I went to the store and got food. And plus, like whenever whenever she left the hospital, she was still like coherent and stuff. She had had a stroke, but she could still talk. It was just like out of the side of her mouth, you know. 
Um, and uh, so, like, I had asked her, I was like, you know, why don't, why don't we have Thanksgiving at the house since everyone's all going to be over there and everything? And she was like, yeah, you know, that sounds good. And so I'd gone to the store and I got all the stuff for Thanksgiving. I got stuff for meals for like every day because like didn't know exactly. The doctors had given her like, you know, a month, to, you know, two weeks to two months, basically. They didn't really know what was going to happen. Right. Um, and uh, so anyways, I got all this damn food and like I ended up getting pissed off by the end. In fact, after she died, uh, her her husband says something to me like, well, it was nice having a woman in the kitchen for for a, for a few days there or something like that. Like, I don't know. Like everyone acted like it's such a big deal for a man to be you, cooking. I got you so were the pissed woman, off. You were the woman in the kitchen. Oh, but- yeah. That man's a fucking asshole. Like, don't even get me started on him. Um, but. <laughs> but like, but Gordon Ramsay. Oh yeah, no, I know, I know. I guess since I don't know, this 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 guy is like a hardcore Trump supporter. Not that that makes him the asshole that he is, but like some. some but some it doesn't that, hurt. Like, <laughs> no, yeah, it adds to it. Um, so yeah. Anyways, it just really pissed me off about that. And then yesterday, I was up at my grandma's house, and she was missing something. Whenever I cleaned out her house uh, while she, you know, after she broke her leg, I told you about all the all the the cleaning adventure that I had in her house mm-hmm. and she's looking for something. And I was like, well, I don't remember seeing that. And she's like, you must have had someone else in here. And I'm like, Nope, it was just me. You know, I don't know anyone else. And she's like, ain't no way you decorated my, cause I, you know, I decorated all the little knickknacks and shit. Cause she was kind of, everything was just a big clutter mess. So anyway, she's like, there ain't no way you decorate, no man could decorate this like you did. Yeah. There was some woman that was in here and I'm like, but there wasn't. Um, so anyways, <laughs> I don't know. Just, <laughs> you just reminded me of all that. Whatever you said <laughs> about the stopping for directions. Like, I don't know. It pisses me off. That's kind of I, I didn't realize that there was like subset of people who really thought that being in the kitchen was truly woman's work because I thought like you know chefs are notoriously like it's one of those fields that women are still like trying to make their way in they feel like yeah they're... it's kind of weird really whenever you got that whole stigma of like you know get in the kitchen or whatever but then you're right like you know. St- the majority of when you think about chefs like really a a man is what comes to mind for foremost i mean i know that there are women in in that industry but you're right um yeah yeah, it's just it's weird weird yeah very strange but apparently we also can't decorate a living room or a a kitchen or anything like i mean i i agree with that you're just crazy you're just you're just you you must be a woman if uh if you were decorating some living room because that's just that that's woman's work (laughs) Men, men can't do that. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, that's funny. But anyways, we are out of time, so I hope everyone's enjoyed. And if you've missed episodes and you want to see what happened, go to Jeff's channel because, like I said, I'm not uploading any of that stuff. It's gone. It's the past. It's gone. And if you, and if you want to see the dig happen just really fast, uh, just put the video in two speed <laughs> and turn <laughs> off the volume. And then you'll have a perspective <laughs> of what Coot did. <laughs> wow. Hey, there's a hole here in the sand pit. Oh, it's filled with bunnies. There's a bunny trap here. There's a bunny trap? I guess so. It's just got lots of bunnies in it, and I guess they just hopped in there, and that's where they've been stuck. Is it Easter? I don't know. Maybe it is Easter. Easter in the desert. Easter in the um, desert. I mean, deserts need Easter, too. Yeah, that's right. It's Easter in the desert, everybody. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next time. See ya.